Ever since I was a kid, all I've seen are movies that portray the ascendance of artificial intelligence and our inevitable conflict with it. For example, The Terminator and The Transformers. The stories they tell are pretty scary. Humans running away from super intelligent machines. That scares me. Science fiction has long fixated on autonomous robots that can think for themselves, but researchers are now catching up with Hollywood fantasies. Autonomous robots are the next revolution in military technology. A humanoid robot that marches into war is still something that is years, if not decades away. Instead, there is a ripple effect as new advances in robotics are gradually applied to unmanned planes, ships, and vehicles. Advances in computing power have helped robots to develop a greater perception of their surroundings, allowing them to deal with complex images. At the same time, many of the same innovations behind the smartphone revolution, smaller and more powerful sensors, microchips, cameras, have boosted robotics. Turkish defense company STM has developed Cargo, a quadcopter capable of performing fully autonomous navigation and striking static or mobile targets with high precision during day and night conditions. It is capable of delivering a warhead of 1.3 kilograms. A UN report in 2020 revealed that it had already been used by Libyan forces to hunt rebels. South Korea's Samsung has developed an automated gun tower for the demilitarized zone with North Korea that can sense and fire at a human target within 2.2 kilometers in the dark. The Israeli drone known as Harop can loiter over potential sites for hours and attack targets by self-destructing into them as soon as they are detected. They have been used by the Azeri in recent Nagorno-Karabakh conflict against Armenian defenses. The British defense company BAE Systems is developing a drone called Taranis that has software that can select its targets to fire missiles at. The future of warfare will involve super intelligence robotics. The real shift that matters is in robotic artificial intelligence and its autonomy. Robots will reorder how we think about wars and how we talk about war. The renowned physicist Stephen Hawking once said that the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. Hawking said that the real risk with AI isn't malice, but competence. The main danger of artificial intelligence is that it does exactly what we want. AI will be very good at accomplishing its goals. If humans get in the way, we could be in trouble. If we instruct the AI to eliminate a threat, it might kill humans if they meet its criteria of threats. Yet, autonomous killer robots bring their powerful ethical dilemmas. If machines are given guns, it opens profound moral and legal questions about war, about who is making the final decisions to kill, and about the ease with which countries might opt for conflict. It is simply unethical to hand over decisions involving life and death to robots. Machines will not be able to distinguish between civilians and the combatants. They could not judge the proportionality of a military response, and the unpredictable behavior could lead to accidents. In the event of an atrocity involving a robot, who will be held responsible? So, what can we do to mitigate such dangers? Firstly, unlike other professions such as law and medicine that have a history of institutional processes for considering ethical issues, computing doesn't have a strong institutional response. It lacks any sort of widely applied ethical or societal review. Hence, researchers have to identify their project's potential risks to society at the beginning of creating new AI technologies and outline plans to mitigate those risks. Secondly, we need to have a healthy dose of skepticism on AI. If we can keep people in the loop, if we can build transparent AI systems and people are able to spot check it instead of making AI fully autonomous. But to do that, we need to lead and not follow. We need to choose to be less like robots, and we need to build the robots to be more like people, because ultimately, the only thing we need to fear is not killer robots. It's our intellectual laziness. Thirdly, there has to be political will for the policies, laws, and the other approaches that can limit the negative impact of harmful technology. My suggestions are not solutions, and they won't solve all our problems, but it's a piece of the puzzle that gets us to a better place. Most importantly, we must deepen our conversations on ethical concerns regarding AI. The only thing we need to fear is ourselves.